Good morning, Facebook. I've, I'm making a few little grits this morning. And I'm fixing to fry up some bacon to go on the top of uh, some eggs. But I'm also going to fry enough bacon so that I will have, um, I'm going to make a broccoli salad. And I don't know if y'all have ever had a broccoli salad. We love them. And so I'm cutting up a lot of bacon this morning for that. Uh, so I'll have a plenty for, the, for my eggs and for my broccoli salad at the same time. Okay? So what I like to do is cut mine in a bunch of little pieces. And then I'm going to even chop it up even more when the time comes to make our salad. Y'all see my cute apron today? Y'all, this is a vintage apron. This is an old-timey uh, apron. Look how, it's, look how it's sewn and all the little stuff around it, the little what we used to call Rick Rack, the little trimming around it. A lady sent it to me. It was her mother. She said that she had so many aprons, and when she passed away, she gave me two of them, and I am so proud of them. They're beautiful. Anyway, I'm going to put this on right here in this skillet. Y'all see, I've got that cut up, and I've got the skillet kind of getting hot right now. After it starts frying a little bit, I'm going to turn it down and let it cook slow because I want it really, really crunchy. I don't want any fat left in it. But on broccoli salad, the bacon is what makes it. Oh, it's so good, y'all. And I'm going to show you how to do that today, and you're going to love it. You probably have already made it before. I don't know. Well, let me tell you, uh, if I, I don't know if I'm posting this today or day after tomorrow. I don't know yet because I got something else I want to post before that. But anyway, Fred, he just fizzled out when he came down to Lucy. He didn't he turn that down. He didn't do a thing. He just rained about three minutes and he left. So that was enough for me to get a little bit of water on the plant. Because it was so dry outside. But I, I'm going to go out this morning and fix the birdhouses back on their stands and that kind of thing. I woke up real early this morning. I woke up at 3 o'clock. I, um, I, I mean, I feel great. I slept great. It's just that I had all the sleep I could take. And if you're like me, if you get up real early, like, wake up real early, you might as well get up, because I'll tell you why. See my grits, I've got to keep them stirred. Um, all you'll do is just waller around in the bed, miserable. So you might as well get up and do something constructive. Right? <laughs> That's right. Anyway. The weather's real humid outside. My hair is frizzing up every which way. This is the last of this pack of bacon. I'll have to go buy some more. I've got some little scissors that you can cut meat with too, but I'm not sure what I did with them. They're around in this kitchen somewhere. I was cutting the thorns up in the middle of the day. All right, there's that. Throw this away, and we're going to cook this. I got it turned down low. The grits are boiling. And when that gets ready, I'll come to the next step. Let me crack these eggs for our breakfast. Got the shale in there, didn't I? I'm going to beat these up real good. Put some, I'm going to put some stuff in them. <laughs> little stuff. Maybe a little cheese, bacon on top, some peppers, maybe a little onion. Okay, I think that'll be plenty. What I do with mine is I beat mine up with a fork and you... You want to get a lot of air in it, uh, and so the way you beat it makes a difference in your air. You turn your bowl kind of sideways like this, and you go in a circular pattern like that. 
see the air just getting in there, and that's gonna make them fluffier. I don't add any water or milk to mine. I just do them like this. See how you got that little wave looking thing in there? And that's gonna get you some, get you some good air in there so they'll be nice and fluffy. Put up some veggies with it. All right, now I'm going to open me some apple pie filling. And I am going to put it in here because see how it's in chunks. And when I make it fried pies, I don't want it in chunks. So I'm going to chop it up a little bit. And get the top off of it. Ah, there we go. Some of y'all sent me a little thing to get the top off of it. I've got it right in there. I just didn't need it today because it came off. But sometimes I have to get that out and use it. I've got this to chop it with, and I'm going to chop it up. And that way when it's time to do my pies, I'll have everything good. Fall will be here pretty soon, and when it does, I'm going to start making fresh apple pies. I just... Right now, the apples aren't, aren't really coming in good. Or I haven't seen any. All right, that looks pretty good. Now let me get my other stuff out. All right, I've got me an onion. Uh, well, two little green onions. I'm going to put in my eggs. Chop those up kind of small. You have dried green onions in your scrambled eggs. They're good. Now I'm going to do a piece of a bell pepper. You don't want too much of that. And you want to cut it up a little smaller too. Chop it up some. Get it in little pieces. Pretty little, pretty little. Put it in our eggs now. Like this. Let's see what else I can find to put in there this morning. All right, our, our grits are getting really creamy. You can tell that. I'm going to let them cook for a long, long time. I've got some good hilltop sausage in the stove. I'm cooking it in the oven, and here's our bacon for topping our eggs with, and a little bit left over for uh, some broccoli salad I'm going to make. Okay, I was showing you my bacon when the phone rang. I can't believe it rang this early, but it did. Anyway, what I like to do with my bacon, is I like my skillet, is I like to turn my skillet this way, and pull my bacon to one side and let all that grease get off of it. And I know you could pick it up with a spoon, but then you gotta stand there and I just don't like to do that. So I've got all my bacon ready. And this grease right here, I'm gonna save it. I'm gonna make some gravy out of it, but not all of it. I don't need all of it. That's way too much grease, but I am gonna save it. the taste of bacon, that's for sure. Alright, here we go, and we'll set this to the side. And here's our bacon. Mm -hmm. I like to just let it be in my mouth. Don't even eat it, just be it be. Okay, I fixed to bake my fried apple pies. This is some biscuit dough I had left from the other day. See how it does? And what I'm gonna do is you take the biscuit dough out, put it on your, your area. And I'm, I'm, it's sticky because it's biscuit dough. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some white lily plain flour because I don't want the self rising when I'm mixing something in. So what I'm going to do is get a scoop of plain flour, white lily plain. I'm going to put it to the side over here. Just let it kind of sit on the side a little bit. <clears throat> and I'm going to start working this flour, I mean this uh, 
biscuit dough and putting some of this plain flour on it because you know biscuit dough self rising. So I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna get it kind of stiff because I want it stiff so I can roll it out with my rolling pin to make my pies. And right now, you know, I, we've, all, we've always been talking about if your dough is, is sticky, you need to do something. So that's what I'm doing. I don't want to just work it around a little bit till it feels right. You can't be right and you can't be wrong on this, y'all. Just do it. Just take that leftover biscuit dough. I add you some plain, or that's all purpose, you know, flour. All right, so what I'm gonna do now <clears throat> is I'm going to move this to the side, my that, in case I need it again. <clears throat> and I'm gonna cut me out, I'm gonna pull me off a piece about like this. What is that? Kind of a large golf ball size or something between a golf ball and a baseball. That's what size I'm gonna use, all right? And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this one little ball right here, roll it out from the center out. <clears throat> and you wanna get it thin and you don't want any holes in it. Okay, that looks pretty good. It doesn't have to be a perfect circuit. Take you some of your apples, about a tablespoon or more, but kind of about a tablespoon. Take you some water and put it on one side of your apple pie, just one side. And I know many of y'all have seen this before, but we've got a ton of new followers. Thank you. And I'm doing this anyway, so I thought, well, I'll just film it because and put my finger in my flour. And what that water does is it works like a glue. All right, now take your knife and make it pretty. Trim off kind of a half moon shape. Put your fork in your flour over here. See, that's where you got your flour. And press down all the way around like that. And that's your fry, that's gonna be. Now this is why it can't be sticky. See there, I'm gently taking it up. And there's our, gonna be our fried apple pie. And that's all it is to it. I'm gonna lay it over here to the side till I get them all made and then I'm gonna fry them up. Okay. Let's lay it right there. You want to do one more real quickly, just so you make sure you know. All right, there's your little flour. Put some on here. Roll it out. <clears throat> Pretty thin, with no holes in it. If it's sticking to your surface, put more flour and work it again. Okay, about a tablespoon of apples. little water on this side, pull this side over, pat your finger in your flour, pat it down, trim it up, pretty, put your fork in your flour, press, the, press it down, this is gluing it together, see when you're pressing it, there you are, there's number two. All right, I'll be back in a minute. Okay, our grease for our pies is is rolling, kind of. And, and I've got it on high, but I'm fixed to turn it down in just a minute. But anyway, I'm gonna put my pies in it. And my skillet will hold three pies. So I'm going to very gently drop those in. You gotta be gentle, gentle, gentle. Don't flop them down in there. All right, then we'll turn it down just a little bit. Get my platter out. Put it right here. Got our eggs over here ready to scramble. And I'm going to get my, my getter out of which I can't find right now. I think sometimes I'm the most unorganized cook in America. <laughs> the only one could beat me. Being unorganized is probably some of y'all because you're the very same way as I am. And my grits right here, they're doing good. Let me turn you down, let's look at that. I put a whole stick of butter in it a while ago. A whole stick. See how creamy they're getting? You have got to cook grits a long time. Or 
They will be greedy. <laughs> I'm going to put some cheese in these in a little bit. Or right now, I'm just letting them cook. You don't put your cheese into the very last thing because if you do, you talk about sticking to a pan, it will stick to a pan. Yeah, I don't know where that little scoop thing is I usually use. I haven't got a clue what I've done with it. I guess I need two of everything so when I lose something, I can find it. All right, this looks like it's ready to turn over. I've got it on eight right now, the temperature. All right, turn it over that side. Turn this one over. I'm cooking this in corn oil. And, um, oh, that's what I'm cooking it in. Remember to stir your grits often, okay? Looks like it's going to be a beautiful day. Fred came and went. Didn't bother us at all here in Andalusia. The children started the school this week. Um, well, Monday, they started the school. They were all excited to get to go. I think they miss their friends in the summertime, and they are ready to start. They're ready to learn and to read and do some math. And, and they love play period, they call it, a gym. They love that. They have computer classes and special classes and all the kind of classes. All right, this is just about ready. This one was like it is ready. It might have been a little thinner. And we'll take it up. Let it drain good. We'll turn it down to about five. I'm gonna make me a glaze out of powdered sugar and water. In case I don't get y'all don't get to see it, you put some scoop of powdered sugar in, and then um. You put your, a little bit of water. You can get too much water in a heartbeat, I'm telling you. A heartbeat. All right, you got that going? Okay, I'll talk to y'all in a minute. All right, it's time to make our gravy. I've got our, I've got my grease on right here. This is my bacon grease. I fixed to put a scoop of plain white lily in it. And I'm going to stir it around. And this is going to tell me how much more flour I need. If you want it to be loose, that looks pretty good. I'm going to put just a, a scoop more. You're going to have to judge this according to how much grease you've got in it. Like that. Okay, I think that's going to be enough. What you're going to do is you're going to stir this, and this is your roux. And you're going to make it till it gets... Kind of brown. We're going to make milk gravy this morning. We're going to add water first, and then we're going to add some whole um, whole milk if you've got it. Mine's 2%. All right, so I've got it on high. I'm going to turn it down just a little bit. Get all your knots out. You can't add flour after you've made the gravy unless you add it to water first, and all this is a bunch of trouble. All right, that's as brown as I want it. See my roof? Can you see it good? I think you can. Then I'm going to add a glass of water. Stir that around. That flour is going to make it thick enough in there. Make sure you, you're scratching the bottom of it now. This is going to be good gravy on our biscuits this morning. All right, now then, you see how it's thickening up? Now I'm not going to add any more water. From now on, I'm going to just add milk. Make some milk gravy. Makes it taste so good. I'm going to add salt and pepper. All right, we're going to let this cook. Let that flour get done in there. This will be delicious over our biscuits. Okay, now let's salt and pepper it. I'm going to taste it after a while. Put a little salt. A little pepper. That makes it good. Y'all like gravy biscuits? I like all kind of gravy. Somebody sent me some ham pieces in there 
and hopefully soon I can make y'all some red-eyed gravy out of it. I've been meaning to. It's just I can't get to everything. I cannot get to everything. All right, now I'm going to taste it. See what we need, and then we'll be done with that. That's quick and easy. It's perfect. It doesn't need anything. I'm a, matter of fact, I got me a bite of pepper just then. It wasn't stirred in good. Woo! All right, now then, you see how it looks? That's some good gravy. All right, it's done. So I'm going to turn it off. Got our gravy done. We've got our fried pies finished. Here they are. But I didn't put the, the glaze on it yet, but I'm going to. I'm going to sit them right here. Got our eggs ready to scramble. And we're coming right along this morning. All right, let me turn you off. We'll get over here and make some biscuits in a second. All right, let's make us some biscuits. Take your flat pan, if you don't have one of these, it is perfectly all right. Put a little grease on it. Make you a bird nest in your self-rising flour. This is self-rising white lily, self-rising. Press down kind of hard, make your bird nest like that. I'm gonna, make, I'm gonna get two egg sizes of grease today, there's one. There's another egg, there's two. Shake your buttermilk up. You can use buttermilk till it for a long time. Put a bunch in your bird nest. I'm probably gonna put a cup and a half. I'm going to mix my grease in with just my buttermilk. I'm not pulling out any flour yet. Notch it. All right, here we go. Now then I'm gonna start pulling in flour with this finger and pull it in from the sides like that. Not from the bottom, but from the sides. You don't ever want to go to the whole bottom. Stir around a little bit so your bird nest kind of looks pretty. Mix that part in. Go and find the bottom of your, of your little mixture, but not the bottom of the bowl. All right, pull in a little bit more. See how your bird nest is getting a little larger around the edges? Okay, pull that in. All right, now stir just a second with your fingers just a little bit just to kind of get that evened out some. Mix that in. All righty. Here we go. I've been looking. Y'all are just making biscuits all over America and in other countries. I am so proud. And you people out in Oklahoma and Kansas and Arkansas, all out in there. You're watching, and I appreciate it. See how your dough's forming right here? All right. Now we'll pick up from this side, pull over to that side, and I think it's about ready. It feels, it feels right anyway. See how it's looking? Try to keep it together. If you got some little stray boogers out there, pull them back in there. All right, now then it's time to clean off our hands like this. Move our bowl out of the way. Sprinkle some flour on our hands and our surface, like that. Take your bowl, I'm um, taking the dough out of the bowl. And here's what we're gonna do now. Let me move this back a little bit where you can see better. I'll pull this, okay? I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. All right, now I'm what I'm doing, my hand's too sticky. Let me get some more flour. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do, I'm pulling up the side and pulling it over. This makes for a flaky biscuit. Also traps air in there. Make sure your top is smooth because that makes for a pretty biscuit. You don't want a lot of extra flour on the top. You can grease your hand, knock it, I mean, flour your hand and knock it off, but you do not want a lot of flour. All right, that's about a half inch thick, I think. Flour your cutting thing. Get your skillet out right here, and we're gonna start filling it up. One, two, 
three, four, five, six, seven. I just give a little quick thing. Eight, nine, ten. For all you new followers, this uh, is a, um, a pizza, old pizza can that I've got. And it just cuts great. I've used it for 53 years. All right. Now I've got my outside ring done. Now I'm fixed to fill in the inside. This is going to probably be about 28, 29 biscuits in this pan. Uh, don't worry about your thinking, well, that's too many for my family. Don't worry about it. Save the dough. Make you some... Uh, apple pies or peach pies or something out of it. Don't, or you can make fried dumplings out of it. I showed y'all how to do that on a video a long time ago. Maybe hard to find now. I don't know. I think I, I think I got room for one little bitty one. Let me put this one. All right, there it is. I'm going to cook these on 500 degrees, probably maybe eight or ten minutes. But the quicker you cook, cook them, the uh, faster they rise. Have them touching each other, and there they are. They're ready to go pop in, and I'm gonna clean my hands off in a minute, and I'm gonna save this dough for what? Fried pies. <laughs> okay, I cooked my smoked salami sausage in the oven on 400, so I wanted you to get to see those before you left me, and I'll tell you what I did, okay? What I do is I cut up my smoked links. I put a little bit of water in the skillet, and then um, I cook them on 400 till they're done. And, and I don't know how long that is, about 30 or 40 minutes. That one's stuck to it. I can't, there we go. All right. And here you go. And they are beautiful and they're delicious. Can y'all see them good? And what I'm going to do now is pour that water that's in there and a the little bit of grease that's in there off and uh, put them on my... Platter. But anyway, here's what I'm using. In case some of you want to know. This is Hilltop Sausage. And you see that cow on there? <laughs> I was talking to Kevin the other day. I said, Kevin, I said, why have you got a cow on your sausage? And and the, he just looked at me like that. And I, I said, it's, it's not beef sausage. It's pork sausage. And they're smoked. And I get the mild. But yeah, he's got hot too. But it's Hilltop Meat Company. And um. I know why he's got a cow on there is because he ha he also has a uh, an arena, and they do rodeos and stuff out there, and then his restaurant and everything. So he, that's what he wanted was a cow on it, and so a cow he put. So these are in your local grocery stores. These sausages are they're in your local grocers. All right, y'all. I'm just about through with breakfast here this morning. Too bad y'all aren't here to eat with me. Maybe soon. Maybe soon. Okay. See you in a little bit. Our grits are done. They taste great. Now I'm going to put a little cheese in it. We're going to have some cheese grits today. So we got my cheese in it. I'm going to let that melt good. Then I'm fixed to be ready to serve this. Doesn't it look good? Creamy, creamy cheese grits. I'd already tasted it and put my butter and all that stuff in it now. And I cooked it. It's been cooking for more than an hour. Uh, because I like mine really creamy. But you don't put these this grits, I mean, no, cheese into the very last second. All right, we're fixed to make our glaze for our pies. So you'll turn around this way. I keep my powdered sugar in here. So I'm going to get me one scoop of powdered sugar. That much, one one scoop. That's probably a half a cup or something. And what you do is this. You turn on your water you know, coming out of your, you can do this with milk. I like water, but each to, to each his own, y'all, to each his own. All right, here you go. You just barely have that water on. Do y'all see how little water that is? And I'm gonna do under, take it out. And I'm gonna stir that around. Do under, take it out, stir it around. You will get too much in a heartbeat. 
and then you'll have to add more powdered sugar to it, and then you will be in a mess. You'll have more glaze than, than you need. All right, see that? That's not thick, but thin enough. Just get a little bit more. I have measured this for you before, but I'd rather not measure because I'm always making different amounts. If I'm just going to make a few pies, I use a little glaze. If I'm making a lot of pies, I use a lot of glaze. That's good. See? All right, here you go. There's your glaze. All right, come over here. Let's, let's glaze these pies. Here they are. All righty. Let me get me a paper towel. I'll show you why. I can't glaze them when they're all piled up like that, so I'm going to take the top few off like this so that I just have one layer to do. And and I don't turn my spoon completely up. I do like this. I just leave my spoon straight, and then, then when I've used some of it, I barely put some on. All right. Now, my mother, she never did glaze pies, and hers were absolutely delicious, but I like glaze, so mama's, mama's fine with it. Whatever makes me happy, that's what she always said. Daddy used to complain about my hands, and she, he'd say, he said, you working too hard, darling. Your hands are looking bad. You working too hard in that dirt and whatever. Mama said, Cecil, leave her alone. She likes to work. She chooses work over pretty fingernails. And I do. Y'all can see how short mine are. I don't even have any. I don't polish them and I don't let them grow out because if I let them grow out, I can't work like I want to. Work brings me joy. Cooking these pies bring me joy. All right, y'all. And I don't have hardly any left, see? So one scoop is plenty. Fried apple pies, darling. <laughs> okay, my oven is preheated to 500. I'm going to put these in on the medium to top shelf. And it is, I'm going to time it for you. So I'll tell you how long it's going to take to cook them. While our biscuits are cooking, I'm going to scramble my eggs. I do these two things at the very last so everything will be good and hot. Everything else is ready and hot. I've got my eggs turned on high. I greased my skillet with uh, solid Crisco, and I'm going to let this uh, get hot, and then I'm going to crumble this bacon on top of it. I've got my little pan here. I'm going to put it in, and I've got it warmed up. I always warm all my bowls. It makes for better things. My mama taught me that. She said, baby, don't ever put anything in a cold bowl. Your food gets cold, so heat your... The reason I got it sitting right here is because my oven's 500 degrees, so it's heating this up. This is real warm. I've got my pies sitting back here on this back eye, so they'll stay warm. You know, you want either hot or cold. If it's cold, have it real cold. If it's supposed to be hot, have it hot. I can't think of any food, hardly, other than a cheese ball and that's supposed to be eaten at room temperature. As God says, the scripture says, either be hot or cold, or I will spew you out of my mouth. In other words, make up your mind. I'm going to turn this, this down now. Um, make up your mind. You can't straddle a fence. You either got to be for it or against it. Um, being undecided is not a good thing. You got to you got to decide one way or the other on everything in life. Anyway, that's probably enough preaching. Let me let me do this for a while and then I'll get back with you. Okay, they're just about ready. Get over here where you can see. I'm gonna put my pan over here because I'm right-handed and I have to do it that way. Remember, you cannot leave eggs when you're cooking them. You cannot leave them, not for a second. They will scorch, they will stick to the bottom. You've got to complete it. You've got to always be turning them and flipping them and carrying on with them. If you don't, you'll have some burnt eggs. All right, so we got our peppers and all our onions. I did not saw these pe saute these peppers and onions. Uh, they really don't need it. I cut them so little. All right, and I've got cheese in there. So what I'm going to do is put this in our nice warm pan. Alright. Got some 
eggs down in there. I'm gonna burn, spread these around just a little bit. And then I'm gonna crumble, I've already crumbled my bacon and I'm gonna put bacon all on the top of it. It's got the eggs in the cheese. This will be so good to have a little crunch of bacon with every bite. Okay, there you go. We're still waiting on our biscuits. All right, the biscuits are ready and they cooked exactly 11 minutes. I don't like to get mine too brown. I like mine to look like this, okay? And there they are. Woo! Turn my oven off and we'll talk to you tomorrow. Have a great day while I'm eating this good breakfast. All right, y'all, breakfast is done. Let me wash all the flour and the bacon grease and all that off my hands. Gives it some, get kind of thin in it. <laughs> some Amish farm soap. I used to teach my children in school, I'd say, now make sure you do this, because that gets in between your fingers, and it, it, it just gets cleaner that way. Y'all notice I don't wear any rings, except for that one little gold ring on my little finger. No bracelets. I just can't do it, and cook too. And I'm rinsing them in good hot water. Go in between them. I don't keep long fingernails. I don't want any place for the germs to grow. So, and I'm gonna get me out a dry, a clean dry cloth. Actually, y'all, these are like baby diapers. <laughs> when uh, my children were little, they wore diapers. And so I saved all of them after they got out of diapers. And they're just, they are so absorbent. Look at this thing. They work great in the kitchen. Great. I love them. Anyway, y'all have a fabulous day. I was supposed to go out and eat with some girls today, so I hope we'll have a good time. I know we will. I know we will. Love y'all. Let Be blessed. Bye-bye.